Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is uh, 11.15 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, Thursday, February 25th, 2021. It is a beautiful day out here. Pretty beautiful, nice, beautiful day. It's probably, uh, I would say if I had to guesstimate, let me see if I can find the exact temperature without interrupting the video. Eh, and no, I'm not going to do all that. I would have to say that it's uh, in the upper 20s, lower 30s, which is beautiful compared to the weather we've been getting or the weather that we were under uh, about a week or so ago. I'm drinking my Red Bull, I'm trying to wake up sleep so well last night really haven't slept well and I don't know how long Just have difficulty sleeping you know sometimes uh, I try to meditate well I did I, I, I did fall asleep quickly last night but was awakened by someone a couple people I'm not going to detail on that. But yeah. Uh, I want to just talk briefly. But yeah, the weather's nice here. So far, so good. It's almost springtime. But I wanna just want to speak briefly on the, uh, the movie Judas and a Black Messiah, which is a great movie. And I highly recommend that you guys see it. Go see it. It's in theaters. I guess it's on HBO Max exclusively HBO Max and in theaters across the, the nation I guess uh, so I saw it at I did see it I went over to a friend's house and my friend has a, a subscription with HBO HBO Max I'm not going to subscribe to it I've already seen a movie so I'm good uh, if I do see it again I, I'll, I'll probably wait until the movie is, is uh, released for purchase then I'll, I'll purchase the movie uh, or I might, I might go see it on the big screen you never know I might go see it on the big screen got my Kansas City Chiefs uh, hoodie on they lost very upset that they lost but it is what it is but yeah like I was saying the uh, movie uh, I'm going to speak briefly about uh, Judas and the Black Messiah like I say watch the movie good movie uh, the main character I guess the main character would be uh, William O'Neill or the uh, Lakeith, Lakeith uh, Stanfield's character, William O'Neill in a movie. I guess some people say uh, Fred Hampton's the main, the main uh, uh, well, he is the antagonist. And then we have the protagonist, which is O'Neill, uh, the role portrayed by uh, Lakeith uh, Stanfield, good actor. And the Fred Hampton uh, character was portrayed by, what's his name, Daniel Kalua. I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. Daniel Kalua. Great. Great, great actor also. He did an extremely uh, good job. Both uh, actors did. They portrayed the roles extremely well. And then you had the supporting actors that, you know, every the movie was good, man. Everyone did their part. Even uh, I forget it now. What was his name? Uh, damn, what's his name? Uh, the guy that portrayed uh, J. Edgar Hoover. Martin is it Martin Sheen? I think it is Martin Sheen. Great job. He, he portrayed uh, the Jeff uh, the uh, uh, the Hoover character extremely well. You know, as you know, J. Edgar Hoover was he had a hard on for. Malcolm Martin, Fred Hampton, and, and other members of the Black Panther movement, and or just any black uh, revolutionary, any any black person that that, that uh, stood out or stood up against against any form of degradation or uh, black people's rights being violated, human rights being violated. He basically targeted all these black uh, organizations, and he was a, a staunch racist 
He was an asshole. He was a racist. So, but Martin Sheen, he did a great job portraying the JFK, or not JFK, the um, um, Hoover character. And everybody did a great job, man. Go see it. It's a good fucking movie, man. Uh, great movie. It was released, uh, what, on uh, February 12th of this month? Yeah, February 12th. Uh, yeah, and they were saying that it um, it was released at the, uh, the what is that called? The Sundance Film Awards or Sundance Film Festival on, uh, I guess, February 1st. And I guess it got rave reviews. Uh, many people loved it and uh, it was a good movie man and uh from what i what i was told or learned is that the movie was was very pretty accurate it was more factual than anything most most of uh what what took place in the movie was uh dead on point so check it out man and i really i really you know i mean the, the the character or the William O'Neill uh, character that was portrayed by Lakeith Lakeith Stanfield, I mean, wow, dude was a dude was a snake, man. He was uh, he was a snake. The dude was really only looking at about six years in total, really, for you know car theft. I think they said he was going to get only eight like eighteen months for for car theft, stealing a car, and five years for impersonating a federal officer. Because uh, William O'Neill, yeah, he would pose as a federal agent and he would flash this fake badge and rob people of their car. Say, oh, your car was stolen and hey, I might have to take this car in. And it is what it is. If you give me a hard time, I'm going to haul you in. You want your car? Come on down to the police station and get it. Come prove your innocence. Come prove that it's your car. When I'm taking this car, I'm going to confiscate it because it was reported stolen. And he got away with it a couple of times. Until he ran across uh, in the scene in a movie, he ran across these guys that he went to this pool hall or bar, and he tried to uh, shake down these cats or uh, rob them of their car, and they realized that it was a fucking fake badge. After he got the keys from the uh, from the uh, owner, convinced the owner to to give him the keys, uh, the owner was like, "Hold on." that's a fake fucking badge and so the character that was you know the O'Neill guy in a movie he uh that was portrayed again by like I say by Lakeith uh, Sandfield uh he ran out of the, the, uh, the bar and the 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 guys were were in hot pursuit of him so they were basically like trying to get the, the car keys back and then whip his ass so he got away he got in the car and I'm not gonna really spoil the, the movie check it out though but anyway he got away with the goddamn car and he it was a uh, basically he was driving too fast and that's how he got pulled over and that's how they realized okay this dude had a fake badge it was a stolen car he was in and he was recruited by this agent uh by the name of uh roy uh roy mitchell fbi agent roy mitchell and i forget the guy who portrayed him in a movie but anyway, yeah, by Roy Mitchell, he recruited O'Neill to uh, to become a, an informant. Uh, therefore, uh, hence uh, uh, becoming a undercover agent within that infiltrated the Black Panther Party. And the guy was so pretty effective. He was really he was really good. He was really good to the point where he became like uh, chief of security for the party. So O'Neill was a very, very cunning, very smart, uh, convincing character. Check out the movie. Also, I want to speak a little bit briefly about the assassination of Malcolm X. As you know, uh, February 21st uh, marked the uh, almost 56 years since the Malcolm's assassination. He was assassinated uh February 1st, 1965. Now, there's uh, new evidence that uh, that basically points the finger at the NYPD and the FBI. There's always speculation 
Well, there are always beliefs that are a belief that the FBI and uh, NYPD had a hand or played pivotal roles in uh, the murdering or the assassination of Malcolm X. So new evidence, there was this letter that was released by the Woods family. This letter was written by uh, uh, Raymond Wood or Roy Wood. He was a former uh, cop, a former I think it was a former NYPD cop that was working undercover. He was working undercover. He was with this, I guess, this unit called Bossy, the Bureau of uh, Secret Services something. I forget what the I is. Is it uh, initiative or investigation? Bureau of Strategic Services and uh, Investigation, something like that. Bossy. It was a unit that was uh, designed, created to infiltrate the uh, black Muslim movement and to keep a close eye on the black Muslim movement, specifically Malcolm X. So he infiltrated Malcolm's security detail or uh, Malcolm's, uh, uh, yeah, unit. So Roy Whit Wilkins on his deathbed confessed to working with the FBI and with NYPD to infiltrate to infiltrate Malcolm's uh, unit or uh, organization. And the, 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 the moral of the story or the gist of the story is that uh, Roy Wilkins, and not Roy Wilkins, uh, uh, Raymond, Raymond, uh, uh, what he did, he set it up to the point, he set up uh, two of Malcolm's main security guards our main security personnel to uh, commit or not commit to uh, be part of this plot to bomb the Statue of Liberty. He set them up. He set up this whole little uh, ploy to to entrap them. And so, yeah, they were arrested. Malcolm's uh, two main security guys were arrested, uh, making Malcolm even more vulnerable, making him more vulnerable to... Uh, to be assassinated, you know, to be assassinated. So, Raymond Woods wrote this letter and he entrusted this letter with his cousin, I guess by the, he goes by the name of Reggie Woods. He read the letter, matter of fact, uh, four or five days ago, four days ago on the anniversary, anniversary of Malcolm's assassination. He wrote the letter. I mean, he read the letter. And in the letter, uh, Mr. Woods, Raymond Woods, confessed to his to him being complicit in Malcolm's murder. Uh, and stating the roles of the NYPD, the Bossy unit and the uh, FBI. He's he Mr. Woods himself. Uh, Raymond Woods stated in a letter that he did not believe Malcolm would be killed, but he oh man, it's gotta be on that. that he believed that uh, he knew he was uh, Malcolm was was the main target was was basically he was the main target to be investigated or to be watched, and he had to report back to the uh, NYPD and the FBI. Excuse me. But in a letter, he said he did not realize that Malcolm was going to be assassinated. Hmm. Oh, man. You didn't think that, bro? I I, I find it very hard to believe that, uh, that uh, Raymond Woods and William O'Neill, I, I just find it hard to believe that they did not know that their roles, the roles they played were would not uh, result or lead up to Malcolm's murder or Fred Hampton's murder. It's hard to believe. I mean, after the after the fact, they want to confess and say, oh, we we played pivotal roles, but we didn't believe uh, our actions or, our, or, or the roles we played would, would, would be uh, what would what, what, uh, Assist or, or aid in the murder of the murder of these two men. No, man, I don't believe that shit. 
they got paid to be traitors to betray Malcolm and Fred. I don't and 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 some people say they were coerced or they were. Well, in the case of O'Neill, he was. I guess they said he was coerced and he was facing. But dude, he was he was really facing six years. And he sold out, and he got paid. They not only allowed him to remain free, but they paid him. So it's like icing on the cake. Okay, you won't go to jail for six years. You can remain free, and we're going to pay you on top of that. So it's like icing on the cake. He should have just been a fucking man. Did the He did the crime due to time. But you sold out. And I hope he's fucking burning in hell right now. The same with uh, Raymond Woods. I hope his ass is burning in hell too. Because they have they killed two, two pivotal primary figures that, uh, that were part of the civil rights movement. The black civil rights movement. Or the black human, human rights movement. You killed two great men that that were they were like thorns on the side of the of, of the white power structure the stone in the boots of the white power structure and i believe there were people within even uh mlk's camp that were yeah there were informants they 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 there were fbi informants slash agents that infiltrated many black organizations and I do believe uh, there are people that were closest to Dr. King that were that basically aided or assisted uh, his assassins. They were complicit in, in the murder, the murder of Dr. King. So those who who perpetrated against Malcolm, be it law enforcement informants those who were complicit in the murder the, the the assassinations of mlk malcolm and fred i hope they're all burning in hell man and i hope they all suffered a painful painfully slow death and they should be burning in hell right about now and i'm gonna end this video i'm gonna end this video but like i say man uh watch document the doc documentaries documentaries on uh on Malcolm. There are a lot of documentaries on YouTube uh based on Malcolm's philosophy on his speeches, documentaries uh based on Fred Hampton's speeches and documentaries based on MLK speeches and documentaries based on uh on Huey P. Newton and uh and the Black Panthers and all that. So watch these documentaries if you can. These documentaries are great, informative, so yeah. I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Y'all be cool. Have a blessed day. Stay black. Have some pride in yourself. Yeah, I got to trim my damn beard. Shit looking crazy, man. It's looking crazy. Looking very crazy. All right, so I'm in this video, guys. Peace, love, and happiness.